This article describes a particle in planar motion when observed from non-inertial reference frames. The most famous examples of planar motion are related to the motion of two spheres that are gravitationally attracted to one another, and the generalization of this problem to planetary motion. See centrifugal force, two-body problem, orbit and Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Those problems fall in the general field of analytical dynamics, the determination of orbits from given laws of force. This article is focused more on the kinematical issues surrounding planar motion, that is, determination of the forces necessary to result in a certain trajectory given the particle trajectory. General results presented in fictitious forces here are applied to observations of a moving particle as seen from several specific non-inertial frames, for example, a local frame one tied to the moving particle so it appears stationary, and a co-rotating frame one with an arbitrarily located but fixed axis and a rate of rotation that makes the particle appear to have only radial motion and zero azimuthal motion. The Lagrangian approach to fictitious forces is introduced. Unlike real forces such as electromagnetic forces, fictitious forces do not originate from physical interactions between objects. <laughs> Analysis using fictitious forces The appearance of fictitious forces normally is associated with use of a non-inertial frame of reference, and their absence with use of an inertial frame of reference. The connection between inertial frames and fictitious forces also called inertial forces or pseudo forces is expressed for example by Arnold The equations of motion in a non-inertial system differ from the equations in an inertial system by additional terms called inertial forces This allows us to detect experimentally the non-inertial nature of a system A slightly different tack on the subject is provided by IRO an additional force due to non-uniform relative motion of two reference frames is called a pseudo-force. Fictitious forces do not appear in the equations of motion in an inertial frame of reference. In an inertial frame, the motion of an object is explained by the real impressed forces. In a non-inertial frame such as a rotating frame, however, Newton's first and second laws still can be used to make accurate physical predictions provided fictitious forces are included along with the real forces. For solving problems of mechanics in non-inertial reference frames, the advice given in textbooks is to treat the fictitious forces like real forces and to pretend you are in an inertial frame. Treat the fictitious forces like real forces, and pretend you are in an inertial frame. It should be mentioned that, "...treating the fictitious forces like real forces." Means, in particular, that fictitious forces as seen in a particular non inertial frame transform as vectors under coordinate transformations made within that frame, that is, like real forces. <laughs> <laughs> Moving objects and observational frames of reference Next, it is observed that time-varying coordinates are used in both inertial and non-inertial frames of reference, so the use of time-varying coordinates should not be confounded with a change of observer, but is only a change of the observer's choice of description. Elaboration of this point and some citations on the subject follow. <laughs> Frame of reference and coordinate system The term frame of reference is used often in a very broad sense, but for the present discussion its meaning is restricted to refer to an observer's state of motion, that is, to either an inertial frame of reference or a non-inertial frame of reference. The term coordinate system is used to differentiate between different possible choices for a set of variables to describe motion, choices available to any observer, regardless of their state of motion. Examples are Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates and more generally curvilinear coordinates. Here are two quotes relating state of motion and coordinate system. We first introduce the notion of reference frame itself related to the idea of observer. The reference frame is in some sense the Euclidean space carried by the observer. Let us give a more mathematical definition. The reference frame is the set of all points in the Euclidean space with the rigid body motion of the observer. The frame, denoted R is said to move with the observer. The spatial positions of particles are labeled relative to a frame R 
by establishing a coordinate system R with origin O the corresponding set of axes, sharing the rigid body motion of the frame R can be considered to give a physical realization of R in a frame R Coordinates are changed from R to R by carrying out, at each instant of time, the same coordinate transformation on the components of intrinsic objects vectors and tensors introduced to represent physical quantities in this frame. In traditional developments of special and general relativity it has been customary not to distinguish between two quite distinct ideas. The first is the notion of a coordinate system, understood simply as the smooth, invertible assignment of four numbers to events in spacetime neighborhoods. The second, the frame of reference, refers to an idealized system used to assign such numbers. To avoid unnecessary restrictions, we can divorce this arrangement from metrical notions. Of special importance for our purposes is that each frame of reference has a definite state of motion at each event of spacetime. Within the context of special relativity, and as long as we restrict ourselves to frames of reference in inertial motion, then little of importance depends on the difference between an inertial frame of reference and the inertial coordinate system it induces. This comfortable circumstance ceases immediately once we begin to consider frames of reference in non uniform motion even within special relativity. The notion of frame of reference has reappeared as a structure distinct from a coordinate system. Time-varying coordinate systems In a general coordinate system, the basis vectors for the coordinates may vary in time at fixed positions, or they may vary with position at fixed times, or both. It may be noted that coordinate systems attached to both inertial frames and non-inertial frames can have basis vectors that vary in time, space or both, for example the description of a trajectory in polar coordinates as seen from an inertial frame, or as seen from a rotating frame. A time-dependent description of observations does not change the frame of reference in which the observations are made and recorded. Fictitious forces in a local coordinate system In discussion of a particle moving in a circular orbit, in an inertial frame of reference one can identify the centripetal and tangential forces. It then seems to be no problem to switch hats, change perspective, and talk about the fictitious forces commonly called the centrifugal and Euler force. But what underlies this switch in vocabulary is a change of observational frame of reference from the inertial frame where we started, where centripetal and tangential forces make sense, to a rotating frame of reference where the particle appears motionless and fictitious centrifugal and Euler forces have to be brought into play. That switch is unconscious, but real. Suppose we sit on a particle in general planar motion not just a circular orbit. What analysis underlies a switch of hats to introduce fictitious centrifugal and Euler forces? To explore that question, begin in an inertial frame of reference. By using a coordinate system commonly used in planar motion, the so-called local coordinate system, as shown in Figure 1, it becomes easy to identify formulas for the centripetal inward force normal to the trajectory in direction opposite to un in Figure 1, and the tangential force parallel to the trajectory in direction ut, as shown next. To introduce the unit vectors of the local coordinate system shown in Figure 1, one approach is to begin in Cartesian coordinates in an inertial framework and describe the local coordinates in terms of these Cartesian coordinates. In Figure 1, the arc length s is the distance the particle has traveled along its path in time t. The path r t with components x t, y t in Cartesian coordinates is described using arc length s t as r s equals x s y s display style math bfr s equals left x s y s right one way to look at the use of s is to think of the path of the particle as sitting in space like the trail left by a skyrider independent of time any position on this path is described by stating its distance s from some starting point on the path then an incremental displacement along the path ds is described by d r s equals d x s 
d y s equals x s y s d s display style d math b f r s equals left d x s dice right equals left x s y s right d s where primes are introduced to denote derivatives with respect to s the magnitude of this displacement is ds showing that x s 2 plus y s 2 equals 1 display style left x s caret 2 plus y s caret 2 right equals 1 eq 1 this displacement is necessarily tangent to the curve at s showing that the unit vector tangent to the curve is u t s equals x s y s display style math bf u underscore t s equals left x s y s right while the outward unit vector normal to the curve is u n s equals y s minus x s display style math bf u underscore n s equals left y s x s right orthogonality can be verified by showing the vector dot product is zero the unit magnitude of these vectors is a consequence of eq one as an aside, notice that the use of unit vectors that are not aligned along the Cartesian x-y axes does not mean we are no longer in an inertial frame. All it means is that we are using unit vectors that vary with s to describe the path, but still observe the motion from the inertial frame. Using the tangent vector, the angle of the tangent to the curve, say θ, is given by sin θ equals y s x s 2 plus y s 2 equals y s display style sin theta equals frac y s sqrt x s caret 2 plus y s caret 2 equals y s and cos theta equals x s x s 2 plus y s 2 equals x s display style cos theta equals frac x s sqrt x s caret 2 plus y s caret 2 equals x s the radius of curvature is introduced completely formally without need for geometric interpretation as 1 rho equals d theta d s display style frac 1 rho equals frac d theta ds the derivative of theta can be found from that for sin theta d sin theta D S equals cos theta D theta D S equals one rho cos theta display style frac D sin theta D S equals cos theta frac D theta D S equals frac one rho cos theta equals 1 rho x s display style equals frac 1 rho x s now d sin theta d s equals d d s y s x s Two plus y s two 
Display style frac d sin theta d s equals frac d d s frac y s s q r t x s caret two plus y s caret two equals y s x s two minus y s x s X S X S two plus Y S two three two Display style equals FRAC Y S X S carrot two Y S X S X S left X S carrot two plus Y S carrot two right carrot three halves in which the denominator is unity according to EQ, 1. With this formula for the derivative of the sign, the radius of curvature becomes d theta d s equals 1 rho equals y s x s minus y s x S display style frac d theta d s equals frac one row equals y s x s y s x s equals y s x s equals minus x s y s Display style equals frac y s x s equals frac x s y s, where the equivalence of the form s stems from differentiation of eq one x s x s plus y s y s equals zero Display style x s x s plus y s y s equals zero. Having set up the description of any position on the path in terms of its associated value for s, and having found the properties of the path in terms of this description, motion of the particle is introduced by stating the particle position at any time t as the corresponding value s t. Using the above results for the path properties in terms of s, the acceleration in the inertial reference frame as described in terms of the components normal and tangential to the path of the particle can be found in terms of the function s t and its various time derivatives as before, primes indicate differentiation with respect to s a s equals d d t v s Display style math bf a s equals frac d d t math bf v s equals d d t d s d t x s y s Display style equals frac d dt left frac ds dt left x s y s right right equals d two s d t two u t s plus d s d t Two x s y s display style equals left frac d caret two s d t caret two right math bf u underscore t s plus left frac d s d t right caret two left x s y s right equals d two s d t Two U T S minus D S D T two one row U N S 
Display style equals left frac d caret two s d t caret two right math bf u underscore t s left frac d s d t right caret two frac one row math bf u underscore n s as can be verified by taking the dot product with the unit vectors u t s and u n s. This result for acceleration is the same as that for circular motion based on the radius rho. Using this coordinate system in the inertial frame, it is easy to identify the force normal to the trajectory as the centripetal force and that parallel to the trajectory as the tangential force. Next, we change observational frames. Sitting on the particle, we adopt a non-inertial frame where the particle is at rest zero velocity. This frame has a continuously changing origin, which at time t is the center of curvature the center of the osculating circle in figure 1 of the path at time t, and whose rate of rotation is the angular rate of motion of the particle about that origin at time t. This non-inertial frame also employs unit vectors normal to the trajectory and parallel to it. The angular velocity of this frame is the angular velocity of the particle about the center of curvature at time t. The centripetal force of the inertial frame is interpreted in the non-inertial frame where the body is at rest as a force necessary to overcome the centrifugal force. Likewise, the force causing any acceleration of speed along the path seen in the inertial frame becomes the force necessary to overcome the Euler force in the non-inertial frame where the particle is at rest. There is zero Coriolis force in the frame, because the particle has zero velocity in this frame. For a pilot in an airplane, for example, these fictitious forces are a matter of direct experience. However, these fictitious forces cannot be related to a simple observational frame of reference other than the particle itself, unless it is in a particularly simple path, like a circle. That said, from a qualitative standpoint, the path of an airplane can be approximated by an arc of a circle for a limited time, and for the limited time a particular radius of curvature applies. The centrifugal and Euler forces can be analyzed on the basis of circular motion with that radius. See article discussing turning an airplane. Next, reference frames rotating about a fixed axis are discussed in more detail. Fictitious forces in polar coordinates Description of particle motion often is simpler in non-Cartesian coordinate systems, for example, polar coordinates. When equations of motion are expressed in terms of any curvilinear coordinate system, extra terms appear that represent how the basis vectors change as the coordinates change. These terms arise automatically on transformation to polar or cylindrical coordinates and are thus not fictitious forces, but rather are simply added terms in the acceleration in polar coordinates. Topic: <laughs> Two terminologies. In a purely mathematical treatment, regardless of the frame that the coordinate system is associated with inertial or non-inertial, extra terms appear in the acceleration of an observed particle when using curvilinear coordinates. For example, in polar coordinates the acceleration is given by see below for details a equals d v d t equals d 2 R D T two equals R minus R theta two R carrot plus R theta plus two R theta theta carrot Display style bold symbol a equals frac d bold symbol v dt equals frac d caret two math bf r dt caret two equals d dot r r dot theta caret two hat bold symbol r plus r d dot theta plus two dot r dot theta hat bold symbol theta, which contains not just double time derivatives of the coordinates but added terms. This example employs polar coordinates, but more generally the added terms depend upon which coordinate system is chosen that is, polar, elliptic, or whatever. Sometimes these coordinate system-dependent terms also are referred to as «fictitious forces», introducing a second meaning for «fictitious forces» 
despite the fact that these terms do not have the vector transformation properties expected of forces. For example, see Schonker and Hildebrand. According to this terminology, fictitious forces are determined in part by the coordinate system itself, regardless of the frame it is attached to, that is, regardless of whether the coordinate system is attached to an inertial or a non-inertial frame of reference. In contrast, the fictitious forces defined in terms of the state of motion of the observer vanish in inertial frames of reference. To distinguish these two terminologies, the fictitious forces that vanish in an inertial frame of reference, the inertial forces of Newtonian mechanics, are called in this article the «state of motion» fictitious forces and those that originate in the interpretation of time derivatives in particular coordinate systems are called «coordinate» fictitious forces, assuming it is clear that «state of motion» and «coordinate system» are different, it follows that the dependence of centrifugal force as in this article upon «state of motion» and its independence from «coordinate system», which contrasts with the «coordinate» version with exactly the opposite dependencies, indicates that two different ideas are referred to by the terminology «fictitious force». The present article emphasizes one of these two ideas «state of motion», although the other also is described. Below, polar coordinates are introduced for use in first an inertial frame of reference and then second in a rotating frame of reference. The two different uses of the term, fictitious force, are pointed out. First, however, follows a brief digression to explain further how the coordinate terminology for fictitious force has arisen. <laughs> Lagrangian approach To motivate the introduction of «coordinate» inertial forces by more than a reference to «mathematical convenience», what follows is a digression to show these forces correspond to what are called by some authors «generalized» fictitious forces or «generalized inertia forces». These forces are introduced via the Lagrangian mechanics approach to mechanics based upon describing a system by generalized coordinates usually denoted as «qk». The only requirement on these coordinates is that they are necessary and sufficient to uniquely characterize the state of the system, they need not be although they could be the coordinates of the particles in the system. Instead, they could be the angles and extensions of links in a robot arm, for instance. If a mechanical system consists of n particles and there are m independent kinematical conditions imposed, it is possible to characterize the system uniquely by n equals 3 n, m independent generalized coordinates Qk. .In classical mechanics, the Lagrangian is defined as the kinetic energy t of the system minus its potential energy u in symbols L equals T minus U display style L equals T U quad under conditions that are given in Lagrangian mechanics, if the Lagrangian of a system is known, then the equations of motion of the system may be obtained by a direct substitution of the expression for the Lagrangian into the Euler-Lagrange equation, a particular family of partial differential equations. Here are some definitions. Definition L Q Q T equals T minus U display style L bold symbol Q bold symbol dot Q T equals T U is the Lagrange function or Lagrangian chi are the generalized coordinates Q I display style dot Q underscore I are generalized velocities l q i display style partial l partial dot q underscore i are generalized momenta l q i display style partial l partial q underscore i are generalized forces d d t l Q I minus L Q I equals zero. 
Display style frac d dt frac partial l partial dot q underscore i frac partial l partial q underscore i equals zero are Lagrange's equations. It is not the purpose here to outline how Lagrangian mechanics works. The interested reader can look at other articles explaining this approach. For the moment, the goal is simply to show that the Lagrangian approach can lead to generalized fictitious forces that do not vanish in inertial frames. What is pertinent here is that in the case of a single particle, the Lagrangian approach can be arranged to capture exactly the coordinate fictitious forces just introduced. To proceed, consider a single particle, and introduce the generalized coordinates as qk. R, θ. Then Hildebrand shows in polar coordinates with the qk r, θ. The generalized momenta r p r equals m r P theta equals m r two theta display style p underscore r equals m dot r p underscore theta equals Mr caret two dot theta leading, for example, to the generalized force d d t p r equals q R plus M R theta two display style frac d d t p underscore r equals q underscore r plus M R dot theta caret two with q r the impressed radial force. The connection between generalized forces and Newtonian forces varies with the choice of coordinates. This Lagrangian formulation introduces exactly the coordinate form of fictitious forces mentioned above that allows fictitious generalized forces in inertial frames for example the term m r theta 2 display style mr dot theta caret 2 careful reading of hildebrand shows he doesn't discuss the role of inertial frames of reference and in fact says the presence or absence of inertia forces depends not upon the particular problem at hand but upon the coordinate system chosen by coordinate system presumably is meant the choice of qk later he says if accelerations associated with generalized coordinates are to be of prime interest as is usually the case the non-accelerational terms may be conveniently transferred to the right and considered as additional generalized inertia forces such inertia forces are often said to be of the Coriolis type. In short, the emphasis of some authors upon coordinates and their derivatives and their introduction of generalized fictitious forces that do not vanish in inertial frames of reference is an outgrowth of the use of generalized coordinates in Lagrangian mechanics. For example, see Macquarie Hildebrand and von Schwerin. Below is an example of this usage as employed in the design of robotic manipulators. In the above Lagrange-Euler equations, there are three types of terms. The first involves the second derivative of the generalized coordinates. The second is quadratic in Q, display style math bf dot Q, where the coefficients may depend on Q, display style math bf Q. These are further classified into two types. Terms involving a product of the type Q. I two display style dot q underscore i caret two are called centrifugal forces, while those involving a product of the type q i q j display style dot q underscore i dot q underscore j for i does not equal j are called Coriolis forces. The third type is functions of q. Display style math bf q only and are called gravitational forces. For a robot manipulator, the equations may be written in a form using Christoffel symbols gamma i j k, discussed further below, as j equals one n m 
I J Q Q J plus J K equals one N gamma I J K Q J Q K plus V Q I equals Upsilon I I equals one N Display style sum underscore j equals one carrot n m underscore i j bold symbol q d d o t q underscore j plus sum underscore j k equals one carrot n gamma underscore i j k dot q underscore j dot q underscore k plus frac partial v partial q underscore i equals upsilon underscore i i equals one n where m is the manipulator inertia matrix and v is the potential energy due to gravity for example and upsilon i display style upsilon underscore i are the generalized forces on joint i the terms involving christoffel symbols therefore determine the generalized centrifugal and generalized coriolis terms the introduction of generalized fictitious forces often is done without notification and without specifying the word generalized. This sloppy use of terminology leads to endless confusion because these generalized fictitious forces, unlike the standard state of motion, fictitious forces do not vanish in inertial frames of reference. Topic: <laughs> Polar coordinates in an inertial frame of reference. Below, the acceleration of a particle is derived as seen in an inertial frame using polar coordinates. There are no state of motion fictitious forces in an inertial frame, by definition. Following that presentation, the contrasting terminology of coordinate fictitious forces is presented and critiqued on the basis of the non vectorial transformation behavior of these forces. In an inertial frame, let R Display style math bf r be the position vector of a moving particle. Its Cartesian components x, y are r equals r cos theta r sin theta. Display style math bf r equals r cos theta r sin theta with polar coordinates r and theta depending on time t. Unit vectors are defined in the radially outward direction. R. Display style math bf r. R. Caret equals r. R equals cos theta sin theta. Display style hat bold symbol r equals frac partial math bf r partial r equals cos theta sin theta, and in the direction at right angles to r. Display style math bf r theta caret equals two r r theta equals minus sin theta cos theta display style hat bold symbol theta equals frac partial caret 2 math bf r partial r partial theta equals sin theta cos theta these unit vectors vary in direction with time d d t r caret equals minus sin Theta, cos, theta, d, theta, d, t equals d, theta, d, t, theta, caret, 
Display style frac d dt hat bold symbol r equals sin theta cos theta frac d theta dt equals frac d theta dt hat bold symbol theta and d d t theta caret equals minus cos theta minus sin theta d theta d t equals minus d theta d t r caret Display style frac d dt hat bold symbol theta equals cos theta sin theta frac d theta dt equals frac d theta dt hat bold symbol r. Using these derivatives, the first and second derivatives of position are v equals d r d t equals R R carrot plus R theta theta carrot display style bold symbol V equals frac D math BF R DT equals dot R hat bold symbol R plus R dot theta hat bold symbol theta equals D V D T equals D two R D T two equals R minus R theta two R carrot plus R theta plus two R Theta, theta, carrot. Display style bold symbol a equals frac d bold symbol v dt equals frac d carrot two math bf r dt carrot two equals d dot r r dot theta carrot two hat bold symbol r plus r d dot theta plus two dot r dot theta hat bold symbol theta, where dot overmarkings indicate time differentiation. With this form for the acceleration, a display style bold symbol a in an inertial frame of reference Newton's second law expressed in polar coordinates as f equals m a equals m r minus r theta two r caret plus m r theta plus 2 r theta theta caret Display style bold symbol f equals m bold symbol a equals m d d o t r r dot theta caret two hat bold symbol r plus m r d d o t theta plus two dot r dot theta hat bold symbol theta where f is the net real force on the particle. No fictitious forces appear because all fictitious forces are zero by definition in an inertial frame. From a mathematical standpoint, however, it sometimes is handy to put only the second-order derivatives on the right side of this equation, that is we write the above equation by rearrangement of terms as f plus m r theta 2 r Carrot minus m two r theta theta carrot equals m a tilde equals m r r carrot plus m r theta theta carrot Display style bold symbol f plus m r dot theta caret two hat math bf r m two 
dot R dot theta hat bold symbol theta equals M tilde bold symbol a equals M D D O T R hat bold symbol R plus M R D D O T theta hat bold symbol theta where a coordinate version of the acceleration is introduced a tilde equals R R carrot plus R theta theta carrot display style tilde bold symbol a equals d d o t r hat bold symbol r plus r d d o t theta hat bold symbol theta consisting of only second order time derivatives of the coordinates r and theta the terms moved to the force side of the equation are now treated as extra fictitious forces and confusingly the resulting forces also are called the centrifugal and Coriolis force. These newly defined forces are non zero in an inertial frame, and so certainly are not the same as the previously identified fictitious forces that are zero in an inertial frame and non zero only in a non inertial frame. In this article, these newly defined forces are called the coordinate centrifugal force and the coordinate Coriolis force to separate them from the state of motion forces. topic change of origin here is an illustration showing the so-called centrifugal term r theta 2 display style r dot theta caret 2 does not transform as a true force putting any reference to this term not just as a term but as a centrifugal force in a dubious light Suppose in frame S a particle moves radially away from the origin at a constant velocity. See figure 2. The force on the particle is zero by Newton's first law. Now we look at the same thing from frame S, which is the same, but displaced in origin. In S, the particle still is in straight line motion at constant speed, so again the force is zero. What if we use polar coordinates in the two frames? In frame S the radial motion is constant and there is no angular motion. Hence, the acceleration is a equals r minus r theta two r caret plus r theta plus two r theta theta caret equals zero. Display style bold symbol a equals left d d o t r r dot theta caret two right hat bold symbol r plus left r d d o t theta plus two dot r dot theta right hat bold symbol theta equals zero, and each term individually is zero because theta equals zero theta equals zero. Display style dot theta equals zero d d o t theta equals zero and r equals zero. Display style d d o t r equals zero. There is no force, including no r theta two. Display style r dot theta caret two force in frame S. In frame S, however, we have a equals r minus r theta two r caret plus r theta plus two r theta theta caret Display style bold symbol a equals left d d o t r r dot theta caret two right hat bold symbol r plus left r d d o t theta plus two dot r dot theta right hat bold symbol theta. In this case, the azimuthal term is zero, being the rate of change of angular momentum. To obtain zero acceleration in the radial direction, however, we require r equals r. Theta two display style d d o t r equals r dot theta caret two 
the right hand side is non zero inasmuch as neither r display style r nor theta display style dot theta is zero that is we cannot obtain zero force zero a display style bold symbol a if we retain only r display style ddot r as the acceleration we need both terms despite the above facts suppose we adopt polar coordinates and wish to say that r theta 2 display style r dot theta caret 2 is centrifugal force and reinterpret r display style ddot r as acceleration without dwelling upon any possible justification how does this decision fare when we consider that a proper formulation of physics is geometry and coordinate independent see the article on general covariance to attempt to form a covariant expression this so-called centrifugal force can be put into vector notation as f theta equals minus omega times omega times r display style bold symbol f underscore dot theta equals bold symbol omega times left bold symbol omega times r right with omega equals theta k caret display style bold symbol omega equals dot theta bold symbol hat k and k caret Display style bold symbol hat k a unit vector normal to the plane of motion. Unfortunately, although this expression formally looks like a vector, when an observer changes origin, the value of theta display style dot theta changes. See Figure two. So observers in the same frame of reference, standing on different street corners, see different forces, even though the actual events they witness are identical. How can a physical force be it fictitious or real be zero in one frame s but non zero in another frame s identical but a few feet away even for exactly the same particle behavior the expression r theta 2 display style r dot theta caret 2 is different in every frame of reference even for very trivial distinctions between frames in short if we take r theta Two display style r dot theta caret two as centrifugal force. It does not have a universal significance. It is unphysical. Beyond this problem, the real impressed net force is zero. There is no real impressed force in straight line motion at constant speed. If we adopt polar coordinates and wish to say that r theta two display style r dot theta caret two is centrifugal force and reinterpret r display style ddot r as acceleration the oddity results in frame s that straight line motion at constant speed requires a net force in polar coordinates but not in cartesian coordinates moreover this perplexity applies in frame s but not in frame s the absurdity of the behavior of r theta 2 display style r dot theta caret 2 indicates that one must say that r theta 2 display style r dot theta caret 2 is not centrifugal force but simply one of two terms in the acceleration this view that the acceleration is composed of two terms is frame independent there is zero centrifugal force in any and every inertial frame it also is coordinate system independent. We can use Cartesian, polar, or any other curvilinear system, they all produce zero. Apart from the above physical arguments, of course, the derivation above, based upon application of the mathematical rules of differentiation, shows the radial acceleration does indeed consist of the two terms r minus r theta 2. Display style d dot theta caret two. 
That said, the next subsection shows there is a connection between these centrifugal and Coriolis terms and the fictitious forces that pertain to a particular rotating frame of reference as distinct from an inertial frame. Co-rotating frame In the case of planar motion of a particle, the «coordinate» centrifugal and Coriolis acceleration terms found above to be non-zero in an inertial frame can be shown to be the negatives of the «state of motion» centrifugal and Coriolis terms that appear in a very particular non-inertial co-rotating frame see next subsection. See figure 3. To define a co-rotating frame, first an origin is selected from which the distance r t to the particle is defined. An axis of rotation is set up that is perpendicular to the plane of motion of the particle, and passing through this origin. Then, at the selected moment t, the rate of rotation of the co-rotating frame ω is made to match the rate of rotation of the particle about this axis, d θ, dt. The co-rotating frame applies only for a moment, and must be continuously re-selected as the particle moves. For more detail, see polar coordinates, centrifugal and Coriolis terms. <laughs> polar coordinates in a rotating frame of reference Next, the same approach is used to find the fictitious forces of a rotating frame. For example, if a rotating polar coordinate system is adopted for use in a rotating frame of observation, both rotating at the same constant counterclockwise rate ω, we find the equations of motion in this frame as follows, the radial coordinate in the rotating frame is taken as r, but the angle θ in the rotating frame changes with time. Θ equals θ minus ω t Display style theta equals theta omega t. Consequently, theta equals theta minus omega. Display style dot theta equals dot theta omega. Plugging this result into the acceleration using the unit vectors of the previous section, d two r d t two equals r minus r theta plus omega 2 r caret plus r theta plus 2 r theta plus omega theta caret Display style frac d caret two math bf r d t caret two equals left d d o t r r left dot theta plus omega right caret two right hat math bf r plus left r d d o t theta plus two dot r left dot theta plus omega right right hat bold symbol theta equals r minus r theta two R carrot plus R theta plus two R theta theta carrot minus two R omega theta plus R omega two R carrot plus Two R Omega Theta Carrot Display style equals D D O T R R dot theta carrot two hat math BF R plus R D D O T theta plus two dot R dot theta hat bold symbol theta left two R omega dot theta plus R omega carrot two right hat math BF R plus left two dot R omega right hat bold symbol theta the leading two terms are the same form as those in the inertial frame, and they are the only terms if the frame is not rotating, that is, if ω equals zero. However, in this rotating frame we have the extra terms minus 2 r ω θ plus r ω 
2 r caret plus 2 r omega theta caret display style left 2 r omega dot theta plus r omega caret 2 right hat math bf r plus left 2 dot r omega right hat bold symbol theta the radial term omega 2 r is the centrifugal force per unit mass due to the system's rotation at rate omega and the radial term 2 r omega theta display style 2 r omega dot theta is the radial component of the Coriolis force per unit mass, where r theta display style r dot theta is the tangential component of the particle velocity, as seen in the rotating frame. The term minus two r omega theta caret display style left two dot r omega right hat bold symbol theta is the so-called azimuthal component of the Coriolis force per unit mass. In fact, these extra terms can be used to measure omega and provide a test to see whether or not the frame is rotating, just as explained in the example of rotating identical spheres. If the particle's motion can be described by the observer using Newton's laws of motion without these omega-dependent terms, the observer is in an inertial frame of reference where omega equals zero. These extra terms in the acceleration of the particle are the state of motion fictitious forces for this rotating frame the forces introduced by rotation of the frame at angular rate omega in this rotating frame what are the coordinate fictitious forces as before suppose we choose to put only the second order time derivatives on the right side of newton's law f plus m r theta 2 R carrot minus M two R theta theta carrot plus M two R omega theta plus R omega two R carrot minus M two R Omega Theta Carrot Display style bold symbol F plus M R dot theta carrot two hat math BF R M two dot R dot theta hat bold symbol theta plus M left two R Omega dot theta plus R Omega carrot two right hat math BF R M left two dot R Omega right hat bold symbol theta equals M R R carrot plus M R theta theta carrot display style equals M D D O T R hat math B F R plus M R D D O T theta hat bold symbol theta equals M A tilde Display style equals m tilde bold symbol a. If we choose for convenience to treat a tilde display style tilde bold symbol a as some so-called acceleration, then the terms m r theta two r caret minus m two r Theta, theta, carrot, display style, Mister dot theta, carrot two hat math bf r m two dot r dot theta hat bold symbol theta are added to the so-called fictitious force, which are not state of motion fictitious forces, but are actually components of force that persist even when omega equals zero. That is, they persist even in an inertial frame of reference, because these extra terms are added. The coordinate fictitious force is not the same as the state of motion fictitious force because of these extra terms the coordinate fictitious force is not zero even in an inertial frame of reference topic more on the co-rotating frame 
Notice however, the case of a rotating frame that happens to have the same angular rate as the particle, so that ω omega... d theta dt at some particular moment that is the polar coordinates are set up in the instantaneous non-inertial co-rotating frame of figure 3 in this case at this moment d theta dt 0 in this co-rotating non-inertial frame at this moment the coordinate fictitious forces are only those due to the motion of the frame that is they are the same as the state of motion Fictitious forces, as discussed in the remarks about the co-rotating frame of figure 3 in the previous section. <laughs> Fictitious forces in curvilinear coordinates To quote Bullo and Lewis, "...only in exceptional circumstances can the configuration of Lagrangian system be described by a vector in a vector space." In the natural mathematical setting, the system's configuration space is described loosely as a curved space, or more accurately as a differentiable manifold. Instead of Cartesian coordinates, when equations of motion are expressed in a curvilinear coordinate system, Christoffel symbols appear in the acceleration of a particle expressed in this coordinate system, as described below in more detail. Consider description of a particle motion from the viewpoint of an inertial frame of reference in curvilinear coordinates. Suppose the position of a point P in Cartesian coordinates is x, y, z and in curvilinear coordinates is q1, q2, q3. Then functions exist that relate these descriptions. x equals x q1 q2 Q three display style x equals x q underscore one q underscore two q underscore three q one equals q one x y z display style q underscore one equals q underscore one x y z and so forth, the number of dimensions may be larger than three. An important aspect of such coordinate systems is the element of arc length that allows distances to be determined. If the curvilinear coordinates form an orthogonal coordinate system, the element of arc length ds is expressed as d s two equals k equals one d h k. 2 d q k 2 display style ds caret 2 equals sum underscore k equals 1 caret d left h underscore k right caret 2 left d q underscore k right caret 2 where the quantities h k are called scale factors a change d q k in q k causes a displacement h k d q k along the coordinate line for q k. At a point P, we place unit vectors at each tangent to a coordinate line of a variable qk. Then any vector can be expressed in terms of these basis vectors, for example, from an inertial frame of reference, the position vector of a moving particle r located at time t at position P becomes r equals k equals 1 d q k e K display style bold symbol R equals sum underscore K equals one carrot D Q underscore K bold symbol E underscore K where QK is the vector dot product of R and X. The velocity V of a particle at P can be expressed at P as V equals K equals one D V K E K display style bold symbol v equals sum underscore k equals one caret d v underscore k bold symbol e underscore k equals d d t r equals k equals one d q 
K E K plus K equals one D Q K E K Display style equals FRAC D D T bold symbol R equals sum underscore K equals one carrot D dot Q underscore K bold symbol E underscore K plus sum underscore K equals one carrot D Q underscore K dot bold symbol E underscore K where VK is the vector dot product of V and EK, and over dots indicate time differentiation. The time derivatives of the basis vectors can be expressed in terms of the scale factors introduced above. For example, q 2 e 1 equals minus e 2 1 h 2 h 1 q 2 minus e 3 1 h 3 h 1 q 3 Display style FRAC partial partial Q underscore two bold symbol E underscore one equals bold symbol E underscore two FRAC one H underscore two FRAC partial H underscore one partial Q underscore two bold symbol E underscore three FRAC one H underscore three FRAC partial H underscore one partial Q underscore three or in general E J Q K equals N equals 1 d gamma n k j e n display style frac partial bold symbol e underscore j partial q underscore k equals sum underscore n equals 1 caret d gamma caret n underscore k j bold symbol e underscore n in which the coefficients of the unit vectors are the Christoffel symbols for the coordinate system. The general notation and formulas for the Christoffel symbols are gamma i i i equals i i i equals 1 h i h i q I display style gamma caret i underscore e equals begin b matrix i i i end b matrix equals frac one h underscore i frac partial h underscore i partial q underscore i gamma i i j equals i i j equals one H I H I Q J equals I J I Display style gamma carrot i underscore i j equals begin b matrix i i j end b matrix equals frac one h underscore i frac partial h underscore i partial q underscore j equals begin b matrix i j i end b matrix gamma j i i equals j i I equals minus H I H J two H I Q J Display style gamma carrot J underscore E equals begin B matrix J I I end B matrix equals FRAC H underscore I H underscore J carrot two FRAC partial H underscore I partial Q underscore J and the symbol is zero when all the indices are different. Despite appearances to the contrary, the Christoffel symbols do not form the components of a tensor. 
For example, they are zero in Cartesian coordinates, but not in polar coordinates. Using relations like this one E J equals K equals one D Q K E J Q K Display style dot bold symbol E underscore J equals sum underscore K equals one carrot D FRAC partial partial Q underscore K bold symbol E underscore J dot Q underscore K equals K equals one D I equals one D gamma K I J Q I E K Display style equals sum underscore K equals one carrot D sum underscore I equals one carrot D gamma carrot K underscore I J dot Q underscore I bold symbol E underscore K which allows all the time derivatives to be evaluated. For example, for the velocity V equals D D T R equals K equals one D Q K E K plus K equals one D Q K E K display style bold symbol v equals frac d dt bold symbol r equals sum underscore k equals one caret d dot q underscore k bold symbol e underscore k plus sum underscore k equals one caret d q underscore k dot bold symbol e underscore k equals k equals one d Q K E K plus J equals one D Q J E J Display style equals sum underscore k equals one carrot d dot q underscore k bold symbol e underscore k plus sum underscore j equals one carrot d q underscore j dot bold symbol e underscore j equals k equals one d q k e k plus K equals one D J equals one D I equals one D Q J Gamma K I J E K Q Display style equals sum underscore k equals one carrot d dot q underscore k bold symbol e underscore k plus sum underscore k equals one carrot d sum underscore j equals one carrot d sum underscore i equals one carrot d q underscore j gamma carrot k underscore i j bold symbol e underscore k dot q underscore i equals k equals one D Q K plus J equals one D I equals one D Q J Gamma K I J Q I E K 
Display style equals sum underscore k equals one carrot d left dot q underscore k plus sum underscore j equals one carrot d sum underscore i equals one carrot d q underscore j gamma carrot k underscore i j dot q underscore i right bold symbol e underscore k with the gamma notation for the Christoffel symbols replacing the curly bracket notation. Using the same approach, the acceleration is then equals d d t v equals k equals 1 d v k e k plus k equals 1 d v k e K display style bold symbol a equals frac d d t bold symbol v equals sum underscore k equals one caret d dot v underscore k bold symbol e underscore k plus sum underscore k equals one caret d v underscore k dot bold symbol e underscore k equals k equals one d V K plus J equals one D I equals one D V J gamma K I J Q I E K Display style equals sum underscore k equals one carrot d left dot v underscore k plus sum underscore j equals one carrot d sum underscore i equals one carrot d v underscore j gamma carrot k underscore i j dot q underscore i right bold symbol e underscore k. Looking at the relation for acceleration, the first summation contains the time derivatives of velocity, which would be associated with acceleration if these were Cartesian coordinates, and the second summation the one with Christoffel symbols contains terms related to the way the unit vectors change with time. <laughs> State of motion versus coordinate fictitious forces Earlier in this article a distinction was introduced between two terminologies, the fictitious forces that vanish in an inertial frame of reference are called in this article the «state of motion» fictitious forces and those that originate from differentiation in a particular coordinate system are called «coordinate» fictitious forces. Using the expression for the acceleration above, Newton's law of motion in the inertial frame of reference becomes f, f equals m a equals m k equals 1 d v k plus j equals 1 d i equals 1 d v j gamma k I J Q I E K Display style bold symbol F equals M bold symbol O equals M sum underscore K equals one carrot D left dot V underscore K plus sum underscore J equals one carrot D sum underscore I equals one carrot D V underscore J gamma carrot K underscore I J dot Q underscore I write bold symbol E underscore K where F is the net real force on the particle. No state of motion. Fictitious forces are present because the frame is inertial, and state of motion. Fictitious forces are zero in an inertial frame, by definition. The coordinate approach to Newton's law above is to retain the second order time derivatives of the coordinates qk as the only terms on the right side of this equation, motivated more by mathematical convenience than by physics. 
To that end, the force law can be rewritten, taking the second summation to the force side of the equation as F minus M J equals one D I equals one D V J Gamma K I J Q I E K equals M A tilde Display style bold symbol F M sum underscore J equals one carrot D sum underscore I equals one carrot D V underscore J gamma carrot K underscore I J dot Q underscore I bold symbol E underscore K equals M tilde bold symbol O with the convention that the acceleration a tilde display style tilde bold symbol A is now Tilde equals k equals one d v k e k display style tilde bold symbol a equals sum underscore k equals one caret d dot v underscore k bold symbol e underscore k in the expression above, the summation added to the force side of the equation now is treated as if added forces were present. These summation terms are customarily called fictitious forces within this coordinate approach, although in this inertial frame of reference all state of motion fictitious forces are identically zero. Moreover, these forces do not transform under coordinate transformations as vectors. Thus, the designation of the terms of the summation is fictitious forces", uses this terminology for contributions that are completely different from any real force, and from the state of motion, fictitious forces. What adds to this confusion is that these coordinate fictitious forces are divided into two groups and given the same names as the state of motion fictitious forces, that is, they are divided into centrifugal and coriolis terms, despite their inclusion of terms that are not the state of motion centrifugal and coriolis terms for example these coordinate centrifugal and coriolis terms can be non-zero even in an inertial frame of reference where the state of motion centrifugal force the subject of this article and coriolis force always are zero if the frame is not inertial for example in a rotating frame of reference the state of motion fictitious forces are included in the above coordinate fictitious force expression also, if the «acceleration» expressed in terms of first-order time derivatives of the velocity happens to result in terms that are not simply second-order derivatives of the coordinates in time, then these terms that are not second-order also are brought to the force side of the equation and included with the fictitious forces. From the standpoint of a Lagrangian formulation, they can be called generalized fictitious forces. See Hildebrand, for example. Formulation of dynamics in terms of Christoffel symbols and the coordinate version of fictitious forces is used often in the design of robots in connection with a Lagrangian formulation of the equations of motion. Topic: <laughs> Notes and references. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Further reading. Newton's description in Principia Centrifugal reaction force, Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia M. Alonso and E. J. Finn, Fundamental University Physics, Addison Wesley Centripetal force versus centrifugal force, from an online Regents exam physics tutorial by the Oswego City School District Centrifugal force acts inwards near a black hole Centrifugal force at the Hyperphysics Concepts site a list of interesting links Kenneth Franklin Riley, Michael Paul Hobson, Stephen John Bentz 2002. "'Derivatives of Basis Vectors and Christoffel Symbols". Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering, A Comprehensive Guide 2 ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 814 ff.
ISBN 0 521 89067 5. External links Motion over a flat surface Java fizzlet by Brian Fiedler from School of Meteorology at the University of Oklahoma illustrating fictitious forces. The fizzlet shows both the perspective as seen from a rotating and from a non-rotating point of view. Motion over a parabolic surface Java fizzlet by Brian Fiedler from School of Meteorology at the University of Oklahoma illustrating fictitious forces. The fizzlet shows both the perspective as seen from a rotating and as seen from a non-rotating point of view. Animation clip showing scenes as viewed from both an inertial frame and a rotating frame of reference, visualizing the Coriolis and centrifugal forces. Centripetal and centrifugal forces at MathPages Centrifugal force at H2G2 John Baez, does centrifugal force hold the Moon up? See also